justice of it all. First of all, Sean, I applaud your bravery. I applaud it. I applaud you. I think your video is a work of art. <laughs> you told it like it is. Horse fucker. Oh, Josiah. Oh, Josiah. The way I come to grips with it is that the authorities have banned it because they feel like they need to take certain action to maintain social harmony. Something powerful has has um, kind of, you know, whether it has fallen on deaf ears or whatever it is, kind of pain. It's just a shame that we didn't get to show it to people so that they could, you know, debate and discuss these issues. Director Ken Kwek, congratulations on your latest film. Thank you. Um, but I know that uh, it wasn't easy getting to this point, the movie being banned. Right. <laughs> Tell me about that. Why, right, how right. did you hear that it was being banned? And right. why do you think it's being banned? Right, right. Like my response to that is kind of... <sighs> Right? Because this is not your first time being banned. <laughs> the first no. short film that you also directed was also banned uh, in 2012 in Singapore and yeah. in Malaysia. Yes. And so this is the second time and I can understand your reaction. Yes. Because as an artist, this is your expression of your perception of things and you want it out there. You want it to be seen, sure. especially in a country that needs to see it most, I feel, because of some archaic laws that need to change, really. I heard about it uh, through the, 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 the media, and the authorities uh, put out a statement explaining that the film would not be given a classification because of its potential to cause divisions in terms of like religion Excitement, and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. I was you know, disappointed and, and, and sad and frankly a little frustrated because I felt that it was a little, it was also a little alarmist, you know, mm -hmm. in the end this is a movie, you know, mm -hmm. it's a work of fiction. Mm -hmm. This was a movie that I made to try and provoke uh, discussion and debate about an important is uh, issue uh, in society and this it was a bit of a lost opportunity i think all art tries to promote that sort of discussion mm -hmm. and it's a it's a bit of a shame because you know it would be nice to think of it as a, a work that you know inspires creativity mm -hmm. rather than you know leads to the stifling of it right um having said that in the longer run I, I hope that, you know, things change, you know, society, you know, progresses, a younger generation grows up and has perhaps less sensitivity and worry about how art might have an effect on, 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 on real life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I still try and keep optimistic and, you know, I live in hope, fingers crossed. Right. How, how does this compare to maybe your shock, your um, frustration from when you experienced a ban right. the first time in 2012? Well, it was 2012. It was some time ago. I was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, I was perhaps uh, feistier. <laughs> more! <laughs> um, but I also was frankly a lot more ignorant. Mm -hmm. You know, I, at the time that a film which was called Sex, Violence, Family Values mm -hmm. was a trilogy of short films that looked at social issues in society, prejudices, mm -hmm. you know, racial issues. I felt that at the time I was very inspired by uh, comedians like Ricky Gervais, mm -hmm. Sasha Baron Cohen. Okay. So, you know, very satirical mm -hmm. black com you know, comedians. Uh -huh. So, you know, that was 
kind of like the tone that I was pursuing and perhaps, you know, not everyone shared that uh, sensibility and taste. So humor. It, in, in hindsight, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, humor is very, it's relative, right? Yes, like some yes. people find something really funny and mm -hmm. other and people just don't. So no, more than that, some people find it offensive. What's funny to some people may be offensive to yes. some too, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think over the years, I've come to accept that a little more mm -hmm. and while uh, I, I think that every comedian has the right to offend mm -hmm. depending on the context mm -hmm. you also have to in the end face up to what that society and the kind of the authorities or the, 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 the censorship norms are for that society mm -hmm. so the second time round I was a little less surprised you could say um, but Did you expect it when you were in the process of creating it, producing it, editing? There was maybe 90% hope that okay. from 2012 to you know, 2022, 2023, okay. that we would be a little bit more open, open in terms of, I think, local movies mm -hmm. pushing at these artistic buttons that a lot of international filmmakers shown in okay. Singapore are allowed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there are much more, I think, controversial and violent and, you know, sexually provocative films that are allowed in Singapore. But I think this film being about my country and my society, you know, which I, which I obviously, you know, hold dear to my heart, that is also the reason why uh, the authorities might have felt that it, it's better to, you know, n not let it go out. Mm -hmm. So, I think I've made my peace with it. Mm -hmm. I have to accept it for what it is for now. I think it's a shame because mm -hmm. I, I would love for my countrymen to be able to see it. But if not now, maybe sometime in the future. Right. Yes, Ken! If yeah. we look beyond Singapore, we're here in Hollywood, and here in Hollywood, people are interested in movies like this. And I'm sure it's creating conversations. Um, your thoughts on Hollywood, uh, perhaps in the last few years, whether by design or because they are being forced by the people, it's more welcoming to inclusivity and diversity. And, and that's what you see on screen, but also the stories uh, that yeah. they green light, these big production houses are green lighting. Your thoughts on yeah. that as, you know, a, a Singaporean, an Asian director? Yeah, I mean, certainly all the signs that are coming out of, you know, of Hollywood and perhaps around the world are very, very positive. Uh, you know, we've seen the real rise of, you know, Asian filmmaking and Asian American filmmaking and Asian American representation. You know, we've seen Parasite, yeah. Everything Everywhere All at Once, Crazy Minari. Rich Asians, Minari, yeah. Beef, the yeah. list goes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of it is very, very encouraging mm -hmm. and positive and inspiring mm -hmm. for any uh, filmmaker. I think that what I would be looking out for is to see whether there would be increasing interest in stories from a particular part of Asia, mm -hmm. uh, which is where I come from, right. which is Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So stories from the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, all the ASEAN countries having more mainstream representation mm -hmm. and stories about that part of the world mm -hmm. being also, uh, uh, you know, part of this uh, revolution in uh, Asian screen content. I like that. And uh, you speak of the Philippines as well. Yeah. You wrote a story <laughs> yeah. that's based or set in the Philippines and you worked with a renowned and esteemed actor from the Philippines, yeah. whom I know personally, yeah. right? That's uh, great. Epi Kison. Yeah. Um, hi, Epi. Um, <laughs> hi, Epi. <laughs> Hello, brother. Tell me about this project. Uh, I first 
got to work with uh, Jeffrey Kizon, who's affectionately known as Epi to all uh, Gababayan. Yes. Uh, See, even that, no Tagalog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked with him on my first feature, which was called Unlucky Plaza, it was a story set in Singapore about a beleaguered Filipino immigrant trying to assimilate, but he gets into, again, he gets into a, a situation where he is scammed and out of desperation, he takes a group of crazy rich Asians <laughs> hostage in a really fancy house. Right. So that's how I got to know Epi. We worked a, a long time together on that project mm -hmm. and the film uh, was finished in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, it premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival and uh, it was also the first uh, Singapore film uh, that was the opening film at the Singapore International Film Festival. So that was a wonderful experience and brought me and Epi very Both. close, not just as colleagues but also and creatives, but also as, as friends. Mm -hmm. So not long after that film, I went out to the Philippines and, and lived there for a little while. And we collaborated on a few projects, one of which uh, is called Bukal. Mm. It's a short film mm -hmm. that, you know, we kind of flipped the roles. I co-wrote the story with him and he directed it. And it's a story set in the restive uh, region of Mindanao. And it's about two groups of uh, soldiers, Christian soldiers and Muslim you know, rebels who are fighting over a single source of water, a wellspring. Okay. Uh, and hence the title of Bukal. the film is Bukal. Uh, the film went out to festivals in 2022 and, and last year and uh, won a lot of awards. So I'm very, very happy for Epi. I'm very proud of him. And I just can't wait to see more of what he does. He's got a, a lots of ideas and I, I, I can't wait to see what he does next as a, as a director as well. I love that and thank you for helping him, working with him in that project. Cool. Your advice for aspiring filmmakers, Asian filmmakers or filmmakers of color out there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I really always hesitate to, to, to dispense advice, yeah. but for what it's worth, I'll say that, you know, follow your passion. There are days when it just feels that it's completely impossible. The story is, you know, not happening. You know, you think you suck. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, stick with it. Uh, don't give up. Get advice from your fellow creatives. Work with different people. Yes. And then you'll probably find a way through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so where do you go from here? I'm working on a, a, a few different projects, got a few, you know, uh, in the pipeline holes in the different fires. Uh, but uh, suffice to say that uh, the ones that are dearest to my heart are still the ones that are set in and around the region uh, of, you know, Singapore and Southeast Asia, um, where, where and despite being out here in, in, in uh, America, America yeah. at the moment, uh, that's where my heart is. Right.